In this video, we're going to be showing you how we saved $1,000 by building our own Hey guys, welcome back to another week here at Hand Creators. This week we got something extremely excited. So, do you guys remember when we first started our backyard? I said this. And then, are you going to tell them the last thing or you're not? No. No, that'll be and a surprise. We have a surprise. I think it's time we reveal what that meant. So, <laughs> to add to our beautiful backyard, we are going to be building a swing bed for our patio. <laughs> we found this one online on this website and we absolutely loved it from the moment that we saw it. But unfortunately, the price is extremely over our um, budget and we will never pay that. And not even that, <laughs> why would we purchase something when we can make it ourselves? The reason we chose this design is because, if you know me, I am terrified of spiders, uh, phobia. And we like this concept because it's full and it has no crevices, less places for spiders to live. Exactly. And Easier to clean too. Yes, and I feel we feel like it goes perfectly with the theme that we have in our backyard. For the last hour or so, we've been playing with the measurements, making sure that we have exactly what we want. And now that we have the measurements, it's time to make the cuts. That's calling. Will he help us in this video? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's get started. Before getting started on the build, we went to our local Home Depot to pick up our supplies. And when we got there, we encountered quite the surprise love bugs everywhere we started off by picking our plywood panels and then picked the rest of our supplies something about the wood side of the store had the love bugs going crazy and we even took some of them home with us i guess they were going to help us on this project We arrived home, we unloaded all the supplies and began planning. Even though this swing is inspired by the one we saw online, we wanted to make it custom to our preference. So we took out our model mattress and began playing with the measurements. Okay, so for the purposes of this swing bed, as Adriana mentioned, it's going to be an enclosed area, meaning that both the side panels and the back panels don't have any crevices and to put it together we're going to use a new method that we've never used before and we're hoping it works out because if not Adriana is going to kill me. This new method consists of opening a groove along the 2x4s so that it is big enough to hold our plywood panels. Therefore we started off by measuring all of our wood to get their true size to avoid any mistakes. Our 2x4s actually measured 1.5 by 3.5 while our plywood did measure half an inch. The next thing we wanted to measure was the thickness of our blade to determine how many times we were going to have to run the 2x4s across the table saw. We set our blade to the desired depth of the groove and ran our first 2x4 across. Since the 2x4 was 8 feet long, we struggled a bit to run it across the table saw. So we decided to cut them down to size first and then create the grooves. Once they were all cut down, we checked them one last time to make sure they were perfect before getting started. We ran all of our 2x4s across the table saw, making sure that the groove was in the center of the 2x4s. half an inch wide by one inch deep so we had to run all of our woods across the table saw a total of four times before we were able to move on to the next step Once the cuts were made, we used a chisel to remove any pieces of wood that were still there. We placed the woods on the floor and made the measurements to cut the plywood. 
it was really starting to come together at this point. Hey guys, day two here. We're gonna be finishing today the swing bed. And to get started, what we're gonna do is that we are going to be cutting our plywood with our handsaw. So I think that's the next step. Let's get going and we'll give you instructions on what you have to do. You wanna tell them what you're doing? <laughs> yes, so I am measuring the space of the panels to know to what size I need to cut the plywood. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to measure exactly what this gap here is and then add an extra inch and a half, which is what's gonna sit on the inside of these two by fours. So mm. yeah, let's go. <laughs> Once we had the measurements, we marked it on the plywood and began cutting down to size with our handsaw. If you guys saw, we just put tape to make that cut, um, but we didn't on this one. So I wanted to show you guys a difference that a little bit of tape makes. Look here, how it split everywhere, and look here, how none of the wood split. So we didn't think this tape was gonna work because we usually use the other one, the painter's tape, but it didn't, and it's see-through, so you can still see your mark. Use tape if you wanna have a clear cut and you don't want your wood to chip. We tested the fit on the wood before cutting the next one and it was perfect. We added tape once more before making our cut, but this time we ran the plywood against the table saw and it was much easier to do. So pretty much this is how it's supposed to look. Wow. <laughs> so if it perfectly inside, it is perfectly flushed. Time to attack the monster. Oh gosh, I'm scared. Yes, guys, we have bananas over here. We have to take them out. Don't judge us. <laughs> Let's do the other cut. Could have made all of them from this plywood. I told you. But you're the math magician, right? You're the math magician. Guys, so we messed up. No. <laughs> Start we again. messed up. Start again. <laughs> I messed up <laughs> on these calculations. Turns out, you could have. We could have made you all of these. Uh -huh. We could have made <laughs> all of these panels from one of the four by eight plywoods. It's if only somebody. If only somebody would have told me that. Right, he's the math scientist here. And I told him at Home Depot yesterday, I was like, are you sure we can't just make all of them with one? No, no, we can't. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> no. I'm like, okay, fine. I believe you. Turns out that we could. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a little bit more ma involved in this math situation <laughs> because we wasted so much more extra money. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. So guys, Jesus left. And I just wanted to say that I told him. What are you like, saying? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't tell me nothing. <laughs> we finished cutting our plywood and think that this is the perfect moment to thank this video sponsor, Craig Tools. Craig Tools specializes in making tools that make woodworking much simpler. And that is exactly what they have achieved with their Sweat 720 Pro Pocket Hole Jig. This jig is perfect for the DIYer on the go. The jig comes with these two attachments that will allow you to extend your workspace and also carry your pocket hole screws and any other items that you may need. The pocket hole jig comes with a revolutionary pedal method which makes it extremely easy to clamp and unclamp the wood that you're working on. It also comes with a measuring attachment so that you know ex the exact thickness of your wood before drilling it and it also includes a box of your one and a fourth inch pocket hole screws as well as their two and a half inch pocket hole screws so that you can just get started on your project. Once you are done, the jig easily folds up and can be easily stored. Without this tool, we definitely would not have been able to complete this build. 
Craig was also kind enough to send us two of their 24 inch bar clamps and their 6 inch adjustable clamps. Thank you once again Craig for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the build. We set the drill to the thickness of our wood and began opening pocket holes as necessary. For our back panel, we opened a total of 9 pocket holes, each one being approximately 9 inches apart. For our armrest panel, we opened 2 pocket holes on the beginning and the end of the wood to attach it to the back panel and the support brace. So if you guys noticed, when we made these cuts, um, we don't have the machine that would have just started it midway. So unfortunately, we have them on the edges as well. When you put it together, the bottom ones, we need to cover the gaps. If not, you can see it. So we're making pretty much, um, what would you say this is called? Off cuts. Off cuts. I've never heard that before. We're making- Little dowels. Little, yeah, little dowels or uh, little covers that we're gonna be putting in place. That way, at the end, when we file it down, you pretty much won't see the gap. I'm gonna be gluing them into place while Jesus makes other ones. To build the panel, we added wood glue on the edge of each side of the horizontal piece and made sure that it was set flush with the vertical one. We then nailed it into place using our nail gun that will be linked below to make sure that all the pieces were secured. Once the both the vertical pieces were secured, we added wood glue along the inside of the groove on all sides and slid the plywood into place. We added more wood glue to the exposed corners of the vertical pieces and on the top edge of the plywood before placing the top horizontal piece. We secured it once more using nails and just like that, the panel was complete. We repeated the same process for the other armrest and the back panel. While I finished the back panel, Adriana cocked all the connections to make sure that it was seamless all around. Once the panels were built, we clamped them with our bar clamp to make sure that the glue dried. While the glue dried, we cut down the 2x4s for our hanging brace and one 2x4 for our front brace. For the front brace, we added 6 pocket holes 11 inches apart and 2 vertical holes on the side. We then added a total of 4 pocket holes to each armrest to connect it to the back panel and with that, it was time to begin the assembly.
We laid the back panel on the floor with the pocket holes facing up and attached it to the hanging brace with two and a half inch pocket hole screws, making sure to leave the same extra space on each brace on both sides. We placed the front brace on the floor and placed the armrest on the inside of the back panel, making sure to line them up on the outside. We then secured them into the back panel and the bottom hanging brace using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. We then secured the armrest to the front hanging brace using two and a half inch pocket hole screws, making sure to leave the same amount of extra wood as the back one. At this point, Adriana really wanted to try it, so we brought out the mattress and it was perfect. Look at that smile. It was perfect. We added the front brace with the same pocket hole screws and secured it all into place. The final step was to add the mattress support braces. For this size swing bed, we needed 14 support braces that, were, that measured 37 and a half inches each and were going to be installed two inches apart. So while Adriana cut them down to size, I opened pocket holes on all of them. If you have been here a while, you can probably guess what color we're going to paint this. Make sure to drop in the comment section below what color you think we're going to do it. If you guessed black, you are right. We use the same stain and sealer from the fence and the pergola. We finished painting and let this dry overnight in the garage until the next day before hanging it. Once it dried, we brought it to the back and got ready for installation. To cut the holes for the rope, we measured the halfway point from the extra wood and used a 3 4 drill bit to open a hole on each one. Before hanging it, we finished attaching the mattress support using two inch screws and that was what really brought the whole thing together. We purchased these hangers from the Porsche Swing Company and installed them using the included screws. We were actually very surprised how strong they were even though they are made out of hard plastic. To hang the swing bed, we used 5 8 inch black poly braided rope that we will make sure to link below. The swing will hang two, from two hangers with a double overcross knot on top. To do this, loop your rope a few times over and then straight through the hole and pull.
So it's 10 30 at night on a Monday, and you can see your top. I know it's so dark, guys. We're so sorry for the bad quality, but wait, 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 wait we, got, we got new lights. Hold on, hold on, come over here. Oh, I'm sure you guys missed all this. <laughs> so it's like 10 30 at night, and on a Monday, and we just finished doing the knot. We're so tired, but this defines us perfectly. Um, we had to see it done already. So I think it's time for the moment of truth. We're gonna let it go from the buckets and we're hoping for the best. So let's go. We adjusted it one more time to make sure that it was leveled, and just like that, we were done. You comfy? Come here, Bailey. I'm a don't let her go under it, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> let's try with the let's try with the mattress. I'm comfy. What if the whole roof just falls on me? Perfect height, bro. Oh my god, it's super swingy. Oh, it's like the okay. Guys, I'm super scared. Oh my god, it does the swing. It's swing a lot. Hey, you like your little swing, man? Look at that face. Hey! This time again. This time again. This time again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time again. This time again. Yeah, yeah, yeah.